Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. It is time to talk about a topic that I am an expert in. Yes, absolutely. Baseball. Well, Fiona, just in general, if I was going to put an umbrella around your expertise, I would say sports. Just, just in general, Just yeah. the entire thing. You and, guys uh, look out. And then when I get specific, definitely baseball as well. The Blue Jays are about to, uh, well, start their season next week. It snuck up on us. Greg's on joining us, Sportsnet analyst and Jamie Campbell, uh, host, of course, of Blue Jays Central. Gentlemen, how are you? Boys, how are you? Nice to see you. This nice is our second go around today. Yes, yes. indeed. Uh, so how has your day been, gentlemen? I love it. You know, I just love getting up early at 5 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you strike yeah. so me as the type. Yeah, Maybe I'm we like, should switch that around and talk about what time person. you guys actually went to bed last night. What, what time did we hit the pillows? I think uh, it was what about... time did the Roxy close? Yeah, yeah. 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. So there, there <laughs> so you go. My first sports question has to be, what is it with sports teams, sports journalists, everybody, and the Roxy? Free entry. <laughs> <laughs> Free That's entry, what she said. bypass the line, yeah. private <laughs> room at the back. Yeah, you go yeah. to the back bar and yeah. away you go. Uh, yeah. You guys have done this tour. How many years in a row have you done the, the Vancouver sort of uh, come out here? From and... a Sportsnet perspective, this is number one. This is the first time we've ever come out and, and promoted our product. Really? For, oh, maybe it was just players last year that came it out. Was, and... That was a Blue Jays initiative. I was part of that. That was fantastic. So yeah. I, do you get a warm welcome here in Vancouver? Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. It's, it. The one thing that I always, I always noticed when... We would come west to play the Seattle Mariners. There were more people from Vancouver in the stands. Yeah. So, you know, Jamie and I walked down the street. We're we're coast to coast um, on on Blue Jays Central, and so people here recognize you just as much as they do in Toronto, which is fantastic. Well, it makes you feel it's great. It's not often that you're going to have a Toronto-based team, Jamie. That 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 becomes Canada's team, and the Blue Jays really are. That's that's our team. I think for a couple of reasons. One, obviously because the Expos no longer exist, and the Expos were the first major league team in Canada. But two, um, there were obviously a lot of people who got caught up in the euphoria of the Blue Jays eventually winning the World Series yeah. as they did in 92. And let's be honest, in this country, the winters are so long. People <laughs> want to be outdoors in, in the summertime. And what do they do when they're outside? Oftentimes, they'll pick up a ball and throw it with dad or swing a bat, what play a little baseball. What in God's name are we looking at right now? Why is this bros hugging that's, it out? Yeah, that's us yeah. in a stretch limousine in Tampa with uh, Brett Laurie and J. Pierre and CB and Travis Snyder. We went to a Tampa Bay Lightning game, found a little kitty rink there, we were just and, was this? Uh, and then met Steve Stamkos, the uh, you know the superstar for the Tampa Bay Lightning. That was what? just a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks uh, ago. The trappings of success. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but it's got to be fun. I mean, when when you hang out with the guys, especially. Especially you, Greg, from your perspective, having played the game for so many years, won a World Series, everything else, uh, to s be involved in the game at such an intimate level still and, and throughout your entire career has got to be just so cool and such a pleasure. Yeah, it's, re it's rewarding for me. I, I was always in love with the game. My uncle Rick played 24 years in the major leagues, Rick Dempsey. So I grew up around the game, and when I got ready to retire, I really didn't have any other option. Yeah, well, this, you this were doing postseason This stuff, guy over right? here, yeah, I was doing postseason work with this guy. He, he kind of... This is my uh, my buddy and my mentor. He gave me my start in the business. I was his choice, and I'll never forget the first day of the postseason that year. He, he, I walk into the studio, and uh, we're in a production meeting, and he, I hope I made the right choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what Jamie, was that day like for you, Jamie? Yeah. It, it was honestly, it was nerve wracking. I can say this now because we're best buds. But uh, I picked him up at a hotel downtown Toronto, and we're driving north on the Don Valley Parkway to get up to our studio. Uh, and, and I'm thinking to myself, goodness, we've hired this guy for the entire, play. like, we're together for the next three and a half weeks, yeah. regardless. On the road. Day, and, like, well, no, night. just We stayed oh, in, you're in, studio in one then. studio the yeah. whole time, right through to the end of the World Series, and I thought, if he flops, and yeah. I know, I, I knew that he was getting well compensated. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you're going to own flops, it, too, because he's your guy, me. right? Yeah. You made yeah. the... <laughs> but it didn't but flop, But you know what? I knew, him well enough, I knew him well enough at that point from talking to him around the batting cage to know that he knew the game up, down, and sideways. He had the experience of playing so long. He's, he's well-spoken, and he knows how to communicate, and that it wouldn't take him long. And it really took him 15 minutes. You, yeah. had, you know how sometimes people can't yeah, get used boom. to television? Yeah. It took him 15 minutes to figure now, it out. Now, I'm being blinded by your ring here. We have to show the audience here. Tell us uh, the little story oh, behind little that one. thing from Look the Marlins, that. It weighs 97. 20 pounds. Yes, it, it's uh, one of the best days of my life right there, watching Ed <laughs> Edgar Renteria. Flop yeah. a base hit up the middle off of uh, Charles Nagy. Uh, is there any way to describe that feeling? Like it would just no. go through your whole body. No, and, and, and the thing about it was is I was a young player. It was my third year in the big leagues, and I was so petrified that I was going to do something to jinx it. The routines 
that took place in that dugout because I, I caught the last like what? three Give innings. Give us some examples because we know sports and rituals and, and oh, superstitions well, are crazy. I, I didn't get to play in the World Series until Game 7, so I hadn't played baseball in like three weeks. But <laughs> every, every time we sat in the dugout, we had to sit in exactly the same place. Every two and two count, we're all shaking our hats outside the dugout. <laughs> and then when they'd foul a ball off, you reload. And then when there's three two, the hats were banging on our cups like this. And just crazy <laughs> stuff. I mean, stuff that, that was just more for pleasure than anything else. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I remember going through it and thinking to myself, this is nerve wracking. I was yeah. I was sleeping three or four hours a night, and I wasn't even playing. And I remember getting the call from Leland. I'm sitting on the bench. And it's the ninth inning, and Charles Johnson reaches first base, and he's ultimately the, the go-ahead run. And in Leland, game seven. In game seven. And he looks at me, and he's like, Zani, go pinch run for CJ. And I went. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I went from that moment to always being the, the guy who wanted to be in the spotlight, to yeah. wanted to be the hero. Yeah, you do. And I you. said, to, I was like, look, big guy in the sky. I don't care about being the hero, just don't make me the goat. I remember standing there at first base thinking, if he hits a line drive behind me right here, I'm hung out to dry. I am not gonna get tagged out right here. And ultimately, I end up going behind the plate and Rob Nen's the first guy that I catch. The first three pitches I catch are 98 mile an hour fastball, 92 mile an hour <laughs> slider, Holy followed Molly. by 101. And I remember sitting back there because, <laughs> oh yeah, and I and, and I was known as a guy that could receive the ball. I was more of a technician behind the plate, make yeah. the strikes look and good. And you're just catching heat. I was just like, forget about trying to make it look good. Just catch it. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> catch it. Block it, catch it, do it. Keep it in you front can. of you. Control the baseball. Uh. Nerve wracking, but I'll, I remember getting this ring the next year. And I remember as soon as they opened the box, I did, tears started pouring out of my wow. eyes. I had Beautiful. I had uh, sunglasses on, thank God, because I would have. <laughs> Jamie's gotten crying now. Big baby. Jamie, what can we expect from the Jays this year? Because uh, the preseason has just been unbelievable for yeah, these guys. Yeah, they've been good. Uh, good young team, some Canadian content, everything. What are you What are you hoping for? It's hard to make predictions for a sport where you play 162 games yeah, and no people can get hurt season. very easily. So I could sit here and say they have the makings of a division winner, and they do. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise Greg if they won the division. Yeah. But things could go drastically wrong too, and they could end up finishing last in their division. So <laughs> it's why it's funny. It's it's easier to make play, predictions right? for, <laughs> for, for sports like football <laughs> and that kind of thing. But for a 162 season, a game season, I just I just I can't make a solid yeah. prediction. Guaranteed fun though. I mean, that's the thing oh, with, yeah. with that game all the way through is is uh, because you have so many games and because you have such a season, there's such a beautiful up and down and arc and you know there's mm -hmm. a grace to the, the season of baseball that you don't get in other sports. There are losing skids, winning streaks, highs, lows, long drawn out games where the Jays get blown out, tight games that last two hours and, and they win one nothing and Crazy. we're there for all of it so. Uh, we got to talk about one really other thing. Really quick, we wanted to talk about a trip that you Fair made ball. to Uganda and there's a documentary about it. Maybe you can tell us about why you went and who you went with and what mm -hmm. you did. Yeah. Uh, well, what happened was was the, Uganda was the first African nation to qualify for the Little League World Series. They beat Saudi Arabia in a tournament in Poland. Unfortunately for them, they live in a third world country where birth certificates aren't often kept. And a lot of these kids did not have authentic birth certificates. So the State Department for the United States did not allow them into the country. And it was heartbreaking for me to find out this story because I'm a huge believer in, in the dreams of children. And yeah. when they go out and they actually earn their way into a tournament like the Little League World and Series and they're denied. Oh. Yeah, and so what happened was is the first team that they would have played was the boys from Langley, British Columbia. And so we knew we couldn't get the kids from Uganda to Canada or the United States. So we took the kids from Langley and last year during the playoffs we ran a documentary by Jay Shapiro mm -hmm. and it outlined the social injustice that occurred. Yeah. And so we raised I think $150,000 to fly <laughs> the kids from Langley over there. Not only Amazing. that, but a couple who had just inherited a bunch of money, they, they ponied up like $35,000 to build the kids from the Sharing Youth Center a brand new ballpark downtown. So it was just a, a tremendous story. And the game 
could not have been scripted by Hollywood Any anymore. Oh, it was unbelievable. This. You'll be oh, able to amazing. see this, of course. Boys, thank you so much. Thanks, uh, you guys. The second go-around was just as much fun as the nice first. Nice to see you again. And I can't always say that. The Toronto Blue Jays uh, season starts with the season opener on Thursday, April 5th, as Toronto takes on the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland, 11.30 a.m. Pacific on Sportsnet right here. And Fairball takes viewers on an emotional, inspiring journey to Kampala, Uganda, where two Little League teams come together to right a wrong. Thanks again, you guys. We're going to take a quick...